Good afternoon. What an honor to be here today with you. It is always a joy and a privilege having the opportunity, sharing with others what God has done in my life. Revelation 12:11 says, they conquered him, that's Satan, by the blood of the lamb, that's Jesus, and by the word of their testimony. And that's what I'm gonna share with you today. Growing up, I felt abandoned, rejected, and unloved. I was put into a foster home and then adopted at the age of three. From the time I can remember, I knew I was adopted. I simply couldn't understand my adoption. I thought the very people who brought me into this world, who were supposed to love me and care about me, didn't want me. And so consequently, I found it very difficult bonding with my adopted parents and family. Attempting to deal with this, by the age of 14 years old, I took a lot of pills out of the medicine cabinet, not really wanting to die, but desperately wanting things to change. This began over a year of staying at five different mental institutions. When one couldn't help me, they simply sent me to another place, giving me the impression that I was hopeless and that I was helpless. My diagnosis, however, is that of every person that's ever lived, is alive now or will ever live, and it's called sin. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. My adopted parents sent me into state's custody, and I appeared before a judge monthly until I was discharged and given back to my adopted parents. Not long after my discharge, when I was 16 years old, my adopted father passed away from a heart attack. And my mom, in her grief, blamed me for all that I had put them through, told me to leave, and that I would never live there again. I contacted my outpatient therapist who agreed against all ethics to take me in. I did not trust anyone and I could not accept love at the time and I soon wore out my welcome. She had got me into high school where I connected with the wrong crowd. I smoked pot and dropped acid. I drank and joined in robberies. One evening I came home to find that all my belongings were out on the porch. And so I then moved in with my boyfriend and his alcoholic mother. Again, I called my mother to see if I could return home, and the answer was no. What little relationship I had with my boyfriend dwindled to nothing when I found out that I was pregnant. Not really wanting an abortion, but believing an abortion was the best thing, given my circumstances. And being adopted myself, and going through all that I was, and the fact that it was legal at the time, not knowing yet that there's a God who knew us in our mother's womb, has all the hairs on our head numbered, and has a plan for us before the foundation of the world. I didn't know that then. I thought I had found an escape when my boyfriend was jailed for burglary. I signed myself into a drug rehabilitation center in Oklahoma City. It was an adult facility and I was still a minor, but they accepted me, but to no avail. I left before finishing the program. I had remembered an old connection of mine, and I called him up and moved in with him and his mother. He sold cocaine, and she ran a psychic line that I later learned a little too late was a cover for an escort service, which is just a fancy way of saying prostitution, later termed sex trafficking. From morning till night, I was always high. I did drugs to relieve the pain of my circumstances, but all it did was create more and more pain. And his mother eventually told me to leave, but gave me a job opportunity. I met with two men much older than I. They set a deck of cards in front of me saying that I would be dealing cards for the American Legion. This was not ultimately what they had planned for my body. There I was at 17 years old, turning my first trick, so they say, for food, clothes, a place to live, and eventually for drugs. They often left me at the dope house where I consumed all sorts of drugs, including heroin. The shame of all which happened to me, the detrimental decisions that I was making, including sexually serving the two men, was devastatingly shameful. At this point, 
I did want to die. And the sooner I could accomplish this goal, the better. Getting very sick, however, I checked myself into another hospital. I was told by the physician, if I kept doing drugs, I would be dead. Receiving another no response from my mother to come home, one of the men who had purchased me took me to where he was from in Northwest Oklahoma. I got pregnant right away, and he asked me to marry him. Along with many issues, as you can imagine, coming from this lifestyle and him being 24 years older, he wanted a boy, but when the baby was a girl, he claimed it was not his, and he neglected her. It was easy for me to identify with my daughter's rejection. I had experienced that all my life, and now I saw her going through it. This only led to more drinking and drugs and running. In one year, I found myself sitting in a jail cell awaiting trial, pending multiple felonies, and according to the judge, facing many years in prison if convicted. My husband at the time filed for divorce. I lost temporary custody of my now two children, and all I felt was total despair with suicidal thoughts consuming me. And this is when I started reading a little Bible that had been placed in my cell, knowing it now to be a Gideon-placed Bible. About this same time, two ladies came and knelt down by the opening in my cell, and we called them the church ladies. Now I know they were two ladies from the Auxiliary of the Gideons International. My question for them at this time was, do you have to go through this hell here on earth, and then when you die, you can go to heaven and finally find relief? See, I had always thought if I could just die, then I would go to heaven and it would all be over. But one of them answered, no, you can receive Jesus into your life, and he can be your savior, and you can know joy and peace right here on earth. And as they moved on down to the next cell, that is exactly what I did. I leaned against the cold, hard bunk, bowed my head, and I said, God, I cannot do this anymore. But if you can, then do it. Jesus, come into my life and be my Savior. And when I came up from that prayer, I knew I was changed, and my life literally has never been the same since that day. Hallelujah. Amen. So by the grace of God, I was sentenced to 10 years probation and a suspended sentence and time served. The judge stated that I must complete a drug and alcohol program. In spite of my present fear and the past failures, I took my youngest daughter at the time and I went to a treatment center in Oklahoma. And this is where seeds really begin to grow in my life. There were two pastors that came in every week and began teaching me the Word of God. This was an exciting experience for me. Brother John told me how he used to be an alcoholic himself before the Lord saved him and called him to preach. And I remember getting on my knees and praying, God, if you are really the God that Brother John is saying you are, and you really want me to serve you with all my life, then I'm asking you for three things. I ask the Lord for deliverance from my addictions, the truth about my adoption, and a family that would love each other and serve him together. And by the grace of God alone, I was able to complete that program and show the judge a completion certificate. I was then led to a church by a lady who was working in the clothing room at the homeless shelter where I was residing later when I got out. I was loved tremendously at this church. They taught me what it means to show love. When I was on the streets, it was all about me and how can I get high and how can I survive? And now it's all about Jesus and how I can serve him and others. And they modeled that for me. After a series of events around this same time, I learned about my adoption, which is what I prayed for. Specifics pertaining to circumstances, including doctors noting extreme abuse in our early environment recorded as being severely deprived. Although difficult, it set me free from years of wondering and not knowing. 
The Bible says in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. <laughs> and indeed it has. In a short period of time, all the members of my biological family were found. After 26 years, there I was meeting my biological parents and brothers. So now I have not only my biological family, my immediate family, but now I'm a part of an eternal family. And what is even better is that we are all adopted into God's family. No one can come on their own. Hallelujah. Yes. No one can come on their own. They must repent and believe, placing faith in Jesus Christ. I asked God for three things, and he has been faithful to accomplish all three and so much more. Ephesians 3.20 tells us, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask, think, or imagine, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. As of this year and this month, I have enjoyed being clean and sober for 23 years. All glory to God. He did it. My children were raised in a saved, sober, sane home and now grown and have children of their own. In God's time, he brought also a kind, loving man into my life. Ron, thank you for being here with me today. I now know what it is like to be free of fear of man, serve Jesus, and share ministry in the gospel together in marriage. In fact, Ron recently became a Gideon, and I am now an auxiliary <laughs> member. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you. Hallelujah. Thanks, man. After the 10 year sentence that I had was complete and another year of an extensive process, the governor of the state of Oklahoma approved and signed my full pardon February 18th, 2013. Whew receiving yes receiving forgiveness of all crimes from the executive branch of government this not only brought into the real what Jesus won spiritually through the cross and the resurrection but also enabled me to pursue a nursing career i completed a cna program then an lpn program and then obtained my rn and soon after i received my bsn through oklahoma christian university they call this a registered nurse and I call it a redeemed nurse. Amen. I care not only for physical needs, but also the spiritual needs of the people in my care. Just this last year, 2021, I obtained what they called an expungement, the legal language defined as erasure and obliteration of all criminal records, stating, I can truthfully say these incidents never occurred. It sounds like the gospel to me. God has confirmed again and again my calling to a speaking ministry to proclaim his salvation, love, and healing power in prisons and jails and churches, conferences, schools, etc. The Gideons alone have sent me to well over half the country, now internationally, sharing my testimony of God's salvation and grace. After much Holy Spirit confirmation and prompting, I finished writing the manuscript of my book. It's a more detailed version of my story titled Rescued, Ransomed, Restored, From Damaged to Delivered. And it is available to purchase today. The very title points to the greater gospel narrative as Christ rescues all his children from the dominion of darkness. He ransoms the many by his very own blood and restoration is ours for those who are called, repent, and believe. God keeps opening up doors everywhere I go to be in service for him, which has been my prayer. And he continues to take all my pain and bad decisions, and now he uses them for his glory to help others know him. 
offering hope through the gospel of Jesus Christ and God's word. I am beyond thankful for the Gideon Auxiliary Ministry. Don't give up. Your ministry intersected my life when I was most desperate, broken. My life was touched and radically changed through your ministry, efforts, and prayers, and ongoing friendship. When it's your own life, it means everything. Thank you.